through there to end up with a really nice, sort of tight, juicy fidget pie. Oh, oh, then he bakes it for an hour at 180 degrees. Next up for her take on fidget pies, Rachel. She's the duttest of baking, but she's come a cropper twice this week. She wants to regain her baking throne. So she hand mixes a rich pastry with a high butter content of 125 grams of butter to only 200 grams of flour plus a beaten egg. But self-doubt still creeps in. With this recipe, I was thinking about really playing around with it a bit, maybe putting some black pudding in, maybe varying it quite a bit. But now that I'm a bit of an agricultural show cookery competition veteran, I kind of know not to veer off the beaten track. Not worth it. Because I really don't want to get disqualified. You're right there. Hopefully that won't happen, Rachel. Let the pastry rest and get started with the filling. So I've got in the saucepan here, I've got a piece of bacon that is cooking from raw and I just put it into some cold water, brought it up to the boil, just a few minutes and it'll be ready. As her bacon boils, she fries an onion with garlic, she slices a cooking apple and cooked potatoes. So the potatoes, I boil them in water for about four or five minutes, they're practically cooked. Whilst her pie is very traditional, she's prepared to make a few tweaks to give her sauce seasoning some oomph. Sage is in the traditional recipe. Rosemary definitely isn't, but I think it's going to give it a little bit of an edge. And some parsley. She stirs together cream, cider and mustard. Mustard, bacon, great combination. Then add sugar, corn flour and the chopped herbs. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the bacon. It's a little bit hot. Slicing it quite thinly. Mmm, oh, that's delicious. With the bacon ready, she can start to assemble her pie. Layers of potato, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, some onion. Doesn't really matter, I don't think, what order you go in. Let's go with apples next. I put in the bacon. Should it be shredded, I wonder? Hmm, I actually had it whole originally, but you know what? I think I'm going to actually shred it. I'm slightly winging it here. Oh, I hope that's okay. Okay, well, look, I've just, I've started now. Shredded, slice, slice, shredded. It still looks really tasty. And then I think I'll pour over half the mixture and go with potatoes again. And it's looking good. Hey, Hello. Theo. How's it going? Fine. Is there any pastry in the bottom? No. No, okay. No, I yeah. was, I was thinking of putting pastry in the bottom, and then I realised that's not traditional. Ah, but is it, Rachel? Well, I'm what not sure because I keep I keep seeing pictures of well I didn't put pastry on the bottom of mine but there's some of them are sealed with a pastry on the bottom but it looks more like a kind of pie like a pork pie right but that that looks that looks lovely could you get my pastry out of the fridge please can't anything else you want <laughs> cup of tea she lays on the rich pastry crust glazes it and adds some top baker touches now I'm just going to roll the scraps of the pastry and just cut out a couple of little designs, leaves, or I could write maybe in letters, please choose me, and then arrange the leaves. And that is my fidget pie. It's so funny, it's so different when you're making something for a competition. So much more pressure than to just cooking it. Okay, Rachel, put it into the oven. Be good. The pie bakes for 45 minutes to an hour at 180 degrees. I like pie, I like cake. As I night like draws in, the pies are ready. Ooh, hoo, hoo. that looks good. I'm pleased with that. Mmm, oh, I feel like a Shropshire wife. I'm happy with this. It's bubbling in the bottom. Pastry is nice and golden brown. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Oh, that looks lovely. That was our final cook. I know, it's very sad, isn't it? Yeah. It's been good fun. And it's very good. But Rachel's still having qualms about her pie. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's Ooh, a good, your that's pastry's a, a bit richer in colour. That's a good day's work. Oh, sorry. Did <laughs> <laughs> <Get> you? <laughs> they both look delicious, yeah. and they'll need to be, as tomorrow is the last competition of the week. Only thing I like you better for. The Ludlow Food Festival is a three-day festival of food-tastic fun and food that's regional to Shropshire is taken very seriously here. So seriously that the only baking competition taking place today is for fidget pie.
This is Theo and Rachel's hardest challenge yet, but as they arrive at the medieval castle, clutching their fidget pies, they're liking what they see. Look at this, it's amazing! And I didn't really, realise they're really... actually using the castle. It's gorgeous! But the people that need to think their pies are gorgeous is the panel of judges. And Judge Xanthi Clay knows what she's looking for in a fidget pie. Well, I'm looking for the key ingredients. I want to see that there's apples, pork, um, onions, and some cider going on in there. Um, and I really want those ingredients to shine, actually, not to be sort of hidden by other things. And then some lovely crisp pastry, which is sort of flaky and melt in the mouth. Our expert chefs have to beat homegrown bakers like Carl Heber Smith. He thinks fidget pies are a pushover. It's not really difficult to make, but I make them quite a lot, so I make them uh, most days. <laughs> Loving the salad there, Carl. Local entrant hey, Libby Baldwin me. is yeah, positive is about okay. her pie. I'm confident of baking, but it's the first time I've made this particular dish. I've never entered anything like this before, so it's the first time in entering the competition. <laughs> that pie is enormous! Charlotte Holland is delivering a pie for a pal, and it's got a special ingredient from her farm. It's made from pork from our Gloucester Old Spots, which will be range, uh, local apples and local and organic onions and potatoes. The competition's hotting up then. As Theo and Rachel bring in their pies, they realise there's a lot of different ways of making a fidget. Quite a variety. And they've all got something their pies haven't. They've all got pastry bases. You know what I did think Every I Every single one has got a pastry base. I can't oh, believe shoot, it. Shoot, so we don't. Oh no, have they got it wrong? Could this mean disaster for their pies? The answer lies with the judges. So we can do. The steward fiddles with the fidgets and the judges get ready to assess whether their pies are heaven or hell. There's no more they can do. Their fates as bakers lies with their pies. To take their minds off the proceedings, Rachel and Theo take in the spectacle of the festival. Look, knife skills class going on. Do you need lessons? Hey, how are your knife skills? <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> Back in the castle keep, our food critics are presented with the first fidget and its previous prize winner, Carl Heber Smith's offering. Oh. So look the presentation, they've oh, upped the game in presentation. This is very fancy. We're not going to be it's swayed so by a, a wedge yeah. of tomato, are we? <laughs> it's quite hollow in the middle, so it's collapsed there. Fighting with it here, and so I'm wrestling with the pie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit unfair on this pie, because it, it actually really? is quite nice. Oh, yeah, really what a good. fight that was. That's actually <laughs> come out quite nicely, hasn't it? It smells very hammy. It smells like it should. Mm. The pastry's hard. Considering it's quite nice and moist to look at, the hand yeah. is quite um, yeah. dry. The pastry's just a bit too thick. <laughs> it's just too thick and it's very hard, isn't it? So we've got a big fat layer of undercooked pastry. Yeah. Oh dear, Carl's pastry might have let him down there. Next to be granted judgment is Libby Baldwin's impressive presentation. Oh, oh look at this! It looks okay, lovely then. and homemade. I mean, I think we couldn't have full marks because it has sort of broken up a bit. It's a big pie. <laughs> the pastry is very, very... Oh, but, but look at the yeah. stripes. That is pretty. It's got quite a lot of potato in it, hasn't it, which is making it quite firm. I want a bit more ham in there. Yeah, I find it a bit stodgy. I almost want to double that layer of ham. Mm. Bit too much potato. Yes. Well, a fine effort from Libby, but she might have needed some more piggy in the middle. Next up is Theo's pie. Oh, Thank look. you. It's with a little body in the middle. <laughs> little black this looks like a different sort of pie. Do you think this, this is just a pastry top on the pie? This looks like it's pastry only. If we're talking about care and love, I think we think it could have been more carefully mm. cut yes, rather it's, 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 it's a little bit slapdash. Cool slapdash, eh? Theo would call that rustic. Not that they'd know it's his, they're judging blind. That pastry looks good. Yeah. When you cut into there, I think that looks really attractive. The ham size, we like the flavour. Oh, the flavour's good. Yeah. yeah. I slightly feel this isn't really filling the, no. the, the criteria. Category, no. the criteria. Um, yeah. But it's a jolly good pie. It's an odd pie to eat cold. Mm. I'm not minding it cold, but I don't think I would eat it. No, really. Are we going to fall out about this? No. <laughs> they liked the flavour. The pancetta paid off, but presentation might have let him down. 
Now it's Charlotte Holland's Pals Pie that's about to be assessed. That is a Thank you. beautiful, beautiful pie. That's a nice consistency, yeah. And they've got some big crimps around the side, isn't it? Oh, now that looks like some ham I want to eat. <laughs> I'll put it oh. on the side so we can see there. It's very thin, the pastry. Yeah. It's very thin. Yeah, it's a full mm. pie, isn't mm. it? It's very attractive, isn't it? Yes, yeah, smiling there. Good. Really nice pastry. The ham is still quite kind of chewy and yeah. quite hard work, but mm. there's a lovely balance with the apple and the onion. But this is one you could serve at a table or take on a picnic. So I still would say it's a little highly seasoned, if I'm honest. The panel seem to have liked that pie. Now they move on to Rachel's dish. Goodness, they were so different. Well, they've got some decoration on the pastry. Pretty. It's a pretty and very well loved. Yes. Nice pastry. They're loving the look there, that's Rachel. Very, that's, that one's it's feeling pleasant. a bit peckish. Yeah. <laughs> this does look quite nice in there, actually. It's very apple this one. And some it's serious mustard seeds by the look of it. Yeah, but it doesn't taste it's overly mustardy. Actually, I think maybe there's a bit too much apple. I, mean, I, quite I like, like it. I, I, like, I know you like. You think there's too much apples, but I think it's okay. Really, it's mm. quite well balanced. For me, this is the best pastry. Well, one of the best pastries we've had. All oh, that rich pastry seems to be working. Having savoured the baking, our judges decide who wins the prizes. This is the final and toughest competition this week. So who, if either of them, will come up trumps and regain the throne of baking royalty? Yes, Rachel's baked her way to second prize, and she's done herself proud by getting a prize with such a local dish. But there's nothing for Theo. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be there, but it's not, unfortunately. Oh, oh. Can we have a little taste? Yes. Oh, great. We never get to taste our results. Work. Mmm. Your mustard's very good. That was a really good addition. Mm. Well done, you. Thank really. you. <laughs> Fantastic. It's very emotional, this. <laughs> it's very emotional. <laughs> I won't be the same again. Charlotte Holland's pal from her farm came first. Well done, you. Absolutely lovely. Carl Heber-Smith didn't pick up a prize. Never mind, Carl. Better luck next year. And Libby Baldwin didn't win anything either. No, I didn't expect to win. But she'd never entered before, so better luck next year, Libby. Well, it looks like we're having fidget pie for tea tonight. Sadly, Theo's pie scores a big nothing today. His Michelin stars didn't cut the mustard, and his total for the week is five. Rachel's pie gets second place, giving her two points. So that means Rachel is this week's Country Show Cook-Off winner. She wins with seven points. And what a week it's been for our duo. Wow. There's been tears, <laughs> tantrums, <laughs> and triumphs. <laughs> so, what impression has the week-long road trip left with our cooks? It's just been amazing. It's been such good fun. And entering these competitions is nerve-wracking. I mean, someone said to me the other day, she says, what are you doing entering into competition? It's like the worst thing. You've been criticised. I was like, well, you know, it's fun and you should enjoy it. I really would like to take the van home with me, but apparently I'm not allowed. I'm going to miss the red van. I missed you and I'm going to miss the red van. <laughs> Next time on Country Show Cook-Off, Aldo Zilli and Sylvena Rowe hit the road from Wells to the Yorkshire Dells. So buckle up as this bake-off becomes bumpy. Oh, this is not Italy. We don't cook here.